So our first topic is going to be the notion of a string. And right away, you're going to be struck by the idea that mathematicians and computer scientists in particular do not always use exactly the same word to describe the same object. And so depending on the setting in which the conversation is taking place, they might use one of several different words. So a string is also called a word. It's also called an array. It's also called a vector. But what is it? It's just a sequence, a sequence of some finite lengths. And the entries in the sequence are called words like characters, letters, coordinates, values, and there are others, words that are used. So here's some examples. Uh, on the first line is what's called a bit string. A bit string is just a 0, 1 string. And every computer scientist, every mathematician, every engineer should, should think of a bit string as one of the most natural and, and very important objects in, in all of combinatorial mathematics or all of computer science for that matter. A ternary string is uh, like a bit string except you have one more symbol. You have a 0, a 1, and a 2. You can have quaternary strings and uh, et cetera like that, but usually people don't talk about those. It, it's just uh, cumbersome. Uh, the third example is a word from a four-letter alphabet. The alphabet, of course, are the lowercase letters A, B, C, and D. Let me pause right there and say that's also a word from a five-letter alphabet, A, B, C, D, E. I just didn't use the E. So, oh, I did. Okay. This is a word from a five-letter alphabet. It's also a word from a six-letter alphabet. I just didn't use the F. Okay. You know, I'm, uh, some of these teaching examples are not intended, but uh, it's good that you're reading. Uh, the fourth example is a Georgia auto license plate. Uh, the standard ones, not the vanity plates, consist of three capital letters and, and four digits. Uh, the next one is a string. I love mathematics. Parentheses, really, exclamation, exclamation. That's a word. Now you're thinking, no, it's not a word. It's a sentence. No, it's a word. It's a word from an alphabet which has 59 letters, lowercase and capital case English letters. It also includes a character, which is a space, and it also includes characters for punctuation marks. And I hope I counted them correctly to get to... 59. Spaces are very important characters for computer scientists. Computers read spaces quite well. And so you should use, you should think that spaces can be used to your advantage in communicating with computers. They like spaces a lot. Okay, now here's a uh, an instance of a little coding snippet, but this is the way that one can introduce an array. Uh, most of my coding snippets are going to be taken from C or C++, but all modern languages have essentially the same syntax for this. So on my top line, I've declared that I'm going to have an array. I've allocated space for it. So I'm, I'm not doing this dynamically. I'm doing it statically. I'm creating the space for this array and telling the computer that I want the entries in this array to be ints, integers. And then I define the elements of the array with a little loop, a for loop. And I think everybody has seen this kind of thing, this kind of construction. And so this tells the computer what the entries in the array are. And then below, I have displayed what the output of this array would be if you printed it with some kind of print command. And uh, if you just spit the images out, you get this string with no spaces. And I comment, that's very bad formatting. A better way is to separate them maybe with some commas. And notice I've dropped the opening and closing parentheses. And that's often done. So, and then an even better one is just to drop the, the commas if you don't need them and take advantage of the spaces. 
and just put the entries in the string separated by spaces. Okay, is that example clear to everyone? <laughs>